Uh, hello, everyone. Hi. I will give you some more uh, seconds for the participants to join. Great. I can see many people coming in. Nice. OK, so uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for participating in this webinar offered by the European School Education Platform. Uh, the European Commission's platform for school education in Europe. Uh, my name is Maria Lena and I will be coordinating today's webinar and I hope you can hear me clearly. Uh, so uh, for this webinar, uh, as you have already seen, probably uh, we have invited Lydia, uh, who is currently working as a senior analyst at the European Schoolnet. Uh, basically, along with her background on uh, e-learning and project management, uh, Lydia has a strong expertise on data and AI in, edu in education, and she actively contributes uh, to the different uh, working groups uh, of uh, European Commission, UNESCO, and the Council of, Euro of Europe that uh, work on AI and data. So uh, today, uh, she will help us reflect and explore the different uh, possibilities that uh, AI offers uh, to teachers concerning students' assessment and evaluation. Uh, if you wish to gain more information on this topic, uh, we encourage you to participate in the online course Assessment in the Age of AI, uh, moderated also by Lydia. Uh, the course will be running on the European School Education Platform until the 13th of December, and my colleague Effie will share the link of the course with you on the chat uh, in, a, in a few moments. So uh, stay also with us uh, until the end of this webinar if you wish to learn more about the upcoming events uh, on uh, the uh, European School Education Platform. Uh, before we begin, I would like to remind you that uh, we will share with you an evaluation form uh, so that you can share your thoughts and uh, your experience for this webinar. And uh, if you have any thoughts, questions, concerns uh, for the webinar, you can always post them on the chat and our speaker uh, will reply to them towards the end of the webinar. So uh, with uh, no further delays, uh, Lydia, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Marina Lena. You can start Let sharing me. your screen. OK, yes, I'm sharing my screen and hope it is visible now. Yeah, everything OK. So yes, we can see. <clears throat> welcome, everybody, and good afternoon to our joint topic of assessment in the AI era. So first of all, a few sentences about magical uh, characteristics uh, of the AI. A lot of talk is about engaging experience, exciting for teachers and students, enjoyable testing. I don't know who enjoy the testing, but they say like that. <laughs> and of course, the teacher dashboard will give us teachers all information we need, like we don't know the information we need for our teaching. And of course, the most um, full sentence and most um, insulting for the teachers is the one AI can be 100% objective and accurate, which we know it's not. But that sentence also means that teachers are not either objective, either accurate. So let's start very actively. Your job now is to go to the menti.com, either scan the code on the screen or click on the link in the chat. And with one word, describe what is your opinion or how would you describe the assessment supported with the AI? So let me see you at the Menti. OK, words are coming. But Elena, could you just confirm me that you now could see my other screen? With uh, yes, we can see the results right now. Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. Hmm. Fast, helpful, tricky, easier, time efficient, objective, challenging, intimidating, innovating. Cool. I like your comments. 
self-evaluation, engaging, confusing, faster, plagiarism, different, measurable, rational. Wow. Well, the practice, <laughs> the aim of this task is not actually to hear what, how could we describe, but to show you quite easily how AI models works. Because AI models are mathematical models. They work on uh, frequencies, on the numbers, on statistics, on probability. So if we ask our model, which is visible on the screen now, how is the AI assessment? They would say it is fast, challenging, innovative, helpful, innovative. Because this is the biggest word, that means but the bigger number of you described it that way. So this is AI model. But I'm sure that some of you has a different opinions about what AI supported assessment is. So let's see what we'll learn today. So back to the presentation. Uh, I used here uh, one definition which is shared by the US Department of Education and which emphasize the automation of the process, which emphasize detecting patterns and automating decisions. So something like we did with this word cloud fake AI model. Uh, I will share with you several examples from the AI squad, one of the squads of Edu European Digital Education Hub, uh, which um, I mentioned also later, but this one focus on uh, assessment, feedback and personalization. So let me share the links to the US department and to the briefing reports if you are not already a member of the hub. So in, the, in that seventh report, uh, we put a focus on different practices about assessment, feedback, and personalization. So uh, approaches to assessment, automated grading. This is one of the things usually uh, mentioned. Plagiarism was the first thing in focus for all the generative AI fast and the chaos. Predictive analytics is much complicated. Uh, it builds on the past results, on the past assessment, and trying to identify factors for future, either progress, success, or failure. Assessment analytics, or part of the learning analytics. So assess um, different results students have been doing uh, during the time, identifying progress, identifying learning gaps or areas which needed support. And interesting from the creation of assessment uh, task is item analysis. This already uh, exists. I hope you uh, use it if you're uh, using some uh, learning management system. So analysis of the tasks which are complicated, which are less complicated, uh, which are easily answered by the students, which are more complex or have uh, some mistake in it. So students can't answer it correctly and maybe we didn't notice the, the mistake in the task. They also talk about differentiation. So adaptation of assessment according to students' possibilities. Uh, it could be possible to for the tool to create different assessment, but also we could start with one of the assessment we prepared and ask some of the AI tools to make different levels of the complexity. So either according to the age of the students, let's say, uh, size of vocabulary they they know or something like that. So different levels for the similar tasks. Uh, we also could ask the AI tools to from our original task to create different types of assessment. You know, multiple choice, open ended, uh, finish the sentence, and and so on. Um, one more complex thing is to create targeted formative assessment for students with learning differences. But that means that you have to share with the student data or information 
about specific student, and that is very risky. I would never recommend that. So instead of doing that, you start with the AI generated assessment, but created with some general information, nothing specific about your students. And then when you got a task, you create individual tasks exactly for your students. So that makes your life easier because assessment task is easier, but also you are not sharing the personal information of, of your students. Uh, here is one example from the Singapore. Actually, Singapore already implemented feedback assistance for mathematics and English language. I'm sharing the link with you uh, in a chat as well. So uh, for this system, they uh, created option for students for a self learning, but also for a teacher to monitor how a student's progressing. So, as they said here, students' preferences and learning needs, responses, content assessment, and different learning pathways. So, learning paths in that system could be teacher-directed, could be self-directed, or could be self-directed with adaptive options. So for that specific adaptive options, they're using adaptive learning system, uh, not for all subject yet and not for all the grades. So they are still in a, in a testing phase, uh, let's say. But what they say here, you could see how students could uh, monitor their dashboard, also the same data information shared with the teacher. So identifying learning gaps, see further practices. So some recommendations are already built in the system, um, which answer the specific needs of those students who is solving the task. Some of the tasks are guided by the system or student mastery. Um, for mathematics specifically, because I'm a mathematic teacher, or at least I was, uh, it was very interesting for me to see how they create different options for the tasks. So you could see question types as geometry, as a written ar arithmetic, notebook, number line, multi-step, and there are several more. I was, I was not able to enter the system, so this is just their leaflet I'm sharing with you. And also they have a two option of giving automatic feedback to the students. So one is immediate, so after each sentence after each line of the equation or problem solving students got a feedback what is correct or not but not just yes and no answer but some hints some suggestions to lead them towards the correct answer or to lead them towards additional resources so this is immediate feedback or delayed feedback, which shows to the students at the end. And as they uh, comment in their uh, resources, they said, OK, immediate feedback is usually used for a practicing to students have more iteration and not repeating the same mistake, but learning something from the mistake. And of course, delayed feedback is on more, more towards the summative area, maybe, or some formative which results will be uh, used by the teacher for example very interesting examples i think we should uh, see how it's going on and see potential and risk and benefits to be used in our schools maybe uh, all the talk about uh, ai actually exploded when ChatGPT faced the earth or faced the public interest so First talk was a lot about plagiarism, about cheating. And um, after that, I think all of us started to think about, yeah, should we stop cheating? Or should we think about rethinking the assessment? Because maybe the cheating is the answer to problems within our assessment strategy. So maybe we are pushing students towards too complex tasks. Maybe we are not giving them enough time. So maybe we are just put too much uh, resources, too much learning on their back, and they are just taking a shortcut. Use some of the AI tools to give us the answer we are asking for. 
Um, also, I heard from several edtech companies who are developing AI tools that students are really finding conversation with AI tutors less intimidating. They're easier communicate with the machine, with the tool, because they said there you could ask any stupid question and you will still get the answer, um, and which is not likewise for us teachers we do have a patience but not a huge or enormous amount of the patience uh, also the example which you've seen in singapore as well so preparation for the tests so um system is giving questions collecting answers from a students back and forth communication interaction exchange of information so students are better prepared for uh, next exams uh, in a test and uh, i would like to point out specifically the last sentence students may be vulnerable to manipulation or inappropriate conduct from ai systems because there are several ai systems already targeting well-being emotional support for the students or any other way of the support uh, we have to clearly state for the students' sake that there is a machine on the other end. There is no humans who are answering for their questions. No guidance is provided by humans in that case, unless, of course, you don't use some other smarter solution. Of course, as an answer uh, to problem with assessment, everybody's talk talking about authentic assessment. So what do you mean by authentic assessment? My assessment are always authentic. I'm creating them. I'm writing them. I'm preparing them for my students. Um, and of course, there is a prompting engineer. I do hope you are not prompt engineers like you were not searching engineers some 10, 15 years ago. So here is one of the example which Amanda Bickerstaff shared with us saying, oh, this is a prompt you could ask some of the AI tools to create tasks for you. And I love, you love the role playing at the beginning. So you tell the AI to please pretend to be something like me, expert teacher, proficient in developing authentic assessment that enables students to develop and exhibit their learning and so on. Then you specify the subject, the areas, the complexity, the task and so on. But we actually want the AI tools to pretend to be us. Maybe we will do it or not. So rethinking assessment is actually answer to all the, the cheating things. So uh, recommendations for rethinking of the assessment, some of them, of course, are don't look on a one exam or one test, one formative assessment as isolated one. Look at the, it as a part of the whole subject, as a part of the whole semester or, or a unit. and value it as a part of the unit um, ensure your consistency because you have to be consistent with the ways you measure you assess the tasks of course make exams meaningful motivating that also means authentic and make it low stakes and repetitive because if we have only one high stack exam in our subject we are of course raising the bar for cheating, for shortcuts, for finding all other ways to get that grade because their life depending on that one grade, uh, it would be much smarter for us to create several low stakes, uh, formative assessment and use it to accumulate the grade, accumulate the points towards the overall grade. So mixing something old, something new, maybe something blue, but mixing traditional approaches, pedagogical method, traditional forms of the task with the new versions is also a good idea. Um, this is the example I found in Australia <clears throat> Agency for Education, uh, the, the left part of the slide. So they are recommending some steps for development of the assessment literacy. So just because the AI age is here, it doesn't mean you doesn't have you you should forget all the competencies, all the knowledge you learn for the 
assessment practices, the good assessment practices. So how to create the task, how to create uh, marking sheets, uh, rubrics, how to be accessible, how to remain quality and consistency, how to smartly, meaningfully use feedback, and of course, what to do with all the data you collected. So this is assessment literacy, which have to work with or without AI for all of us who are teachers. Uh, also, one uh, part I like very much, it was from Pestalozzi Program of Council of Europe some uh, 10 years ago. Uh, the feedback have to say where I'm going, how I'm doing, and where we'll be next. So have that in mind and design assessments so students could demonstrate their learning, not demonstrate their mistakes, because sometimes we oh, create tasks just to find the mistakes, not to find out what they really know. So they could promote uh, their academic integrity and show what they learned. Uh, back from to report seven of the briefing reports of uh, AI squad. Some of the practices for using AI for feedback because AI could be an excellent tool for providing automated feedback. So feedback will be personalized, of course, um, adjusted to learner specific goals and levels. Um, this personalized comes with a high risk because of the sharing of the information which is needed for students for system to be really personalized feedback immediate so you see in a in a singapore example that immediate feedback back and forth question asker uh hint how to go on uh supporting learners through the uh, process of learning multimodal of course video audio text picture different uh, aspects which may which could be too complicated or too time consuming for us. Also actionable to provide information and to address some gaps, some situation. Uh, interactive, so students could ask a question, could give some, get some feedback, ask another question, or system is asking the question and uh, giving feedback upon the answers they got from the students. Detailed, so specific areas for improvement, and this could also lead students, lead stern, uh, learners to understand their strengths and weaknesses. This is one of the area I, I always wanted my students to know uh, where they are in that process of learning. So they don't have a false image. Oh, I know everything. And then, then I gave them three for example, so they don't know everything. So reality check what they really know, what they want, what they need to know to uh, reach the objectives of specific subjects. Okay, so I have a lovely scenario for you. And what I need you is to go back to the Mentimeter again. It's the same code. I will share it one more time and I'll just need to change the slide. If you are still in same Menti, please click on the top um, to go to the next slide, which I shared. OK, so we have some lovely scenario. Lovely scenario says another key benefit of using AI in assessment is that companies and education providers get access to massive amounts of advanced data analytics. Educators can leverage advanced data insights to understand learning and skill gaps and improve the quality of learning resources and assessment content. So what do you say about that lovely scenario? You could choose several options. Is it excellent? Is that will really support improvements? Are we giving data to companies? or what are education providers doing with our data, with student data? Whose data students, teachers? So, ew, are they using teachers' data as well? Uh, resistance is futile, Star Wars. And I don't like it. Okay, very interesting 
graphs showing up. Oh, we have almost quite similar number, which says excellent, and I don't like it. <laughs> it looks like we are going to have a Gauss normal curve <laughs> at the end. Uh, what are education providers doing with data? Yes, this is the question I would like them <laughs> to, uh, to answer it. Um, so everybody says we need more data. But the questions we should ask them is, what are you doing with those data? Because if you are not doing anything, then you don't have to or you don't need to collect those data. If you are doing some bad things like profiling us, serving us with uh, targeted ads, with targeted recommendations, then we should know that you are using our data and what you are doing uh, with it. So uh, thank you for playing with me. I like the development. I like that we are positive, that we are not sure what to do. And let's see how this scenario will go on in the future. So my question uh, was, uh, well, why I put this scenario, me pedagogical aspects, uh, to actually raise those questions or to lead you towards thinking about questions you need to ask before starting to using some of such tools. So if those tools are collecting data and they are collecting the data, so who has access, how long, what purpose? Do we have a right to be forgotten? Do, does our students have a right to be forgotten or their mm, errors and mistakes from the first grade will follow them up? Ooh, till the funeral, hope not. Personalization. So personalization and adaptivity uh, works on the data that is collecting. But we know that in a classroom we have students who push other students, lead them away. So if AI system doesn't do that, maybe we are just limiting their learning. Uh, assessment. Uh, can we really automatically grade everything? Not from technical perspective, but from a human agency perspective, is it good to use tool, technical tool to grade such a task? Doesn't our students deserve our time to give them feedback? Is there a, at all then difference between computer feedback, automated feedback and our feedback? If they are not, we are in real trouble. OK, predictions a very, very slippery uh, area because all the predictions work on a past results. And all what's known about us in the past system is calculating, looking for probability and saying, OK, this person is maybe have a potential for the success. This person, yeah, I don't see that happening. This is some failure. But past result is not everything. We showed possibilities to improve, to change our future, to change our destiny. So be careful with the predictions. Oh, and we are going towards the bedside as in any story. So in fairy tales, there is a happy end. Today we have such a black scenarios. So the feedback and the grade uh, which automated system give to the students could really could have a huge influence on his academic records and the future steps. Could force students to be set up in a grade in a classroom according to the results, but maybe this is not a supportive way to put the students in that. So maybe we put them too high, maybe we put them too low. We, we are already sure and we know about the biases and uh, problems with algorithms. High stakes assess assessment, a huge risk. If they've been a the huge risk in a normal context, they're especially huge risk if AI system is used with it. So um, education, uh, no education, European Commission AI Act is also targeting that specific area in education, saying that if uh, 
automated system, if AI system will be used to endanger some future development of the humans, uh, it should be considered as a high risk and evaluated uh, on a several uh, levels. Uh, yes, webinar is recorded. So before you say yes, here is one of the possible scenario. So the school decided to implement AI powered automated grading system. It could have quizzes, it could grade essays, presentations. They say it will reduce teacher workload, provide students with consistent feedback, identify patterns, highlight where support is needed. Of course, it is playing a key role in personalized learning, track students' progress, give them learning resources, and AI learning system, recommend resources, and of course, advancement or not advancement of the stud students in this tailored tutoring support. So before you start doing that, before you became a part of such a scenario, I kindly ask you to read European Commissioner's ethical guidelines and use some of the questions they put in the guidelines to get a clear answer either from a tech providers, either from a school administration, either from a government or regional national stakeholders, get the answer so you are on a safe side and you know what are you doing with, with such a system. Um, so some of the questions were, is the teacher role clearly defined? Or is there a teacher in the loop that could intervene with the uh, process, with the results? Do teachers and school leaders understand how specific assessment or personalization algorithms work within the AI system? I'm not reading everything. You will have a homework for that. Is the system accessible by everyone in the same way without any barriers? We live in a Europe. We know how many languages, how many nationalities, how many different backgrounds we have. And this system should be should give equal rights, equal possibilities to all of our students. Doesn't matter where they are coming from. Oops. Uh, are students or their parents involved in the decision to use the AI system? Does that, other people know that we are going to use something like that? Are learners and teachers informed about what happens with their data? We mentioned data several times and how it's used that purpose. Technical robustness, appropriate oversight mechanisms, so technical aspects, and my favorite, accountability. Who will be accountable for the grade that will be given to students by AI system? Could you say, yeah, the computer is the guilt one. I have nothing to do with that. Of course not. Teacher, school, are always accountable for such processes. So I'm sorry to tell you, but there is no luck that we will skip this accountability. So one of the question, which is not ethical question, it's actually a question about our professional integrity. So is all that could be done with AI system really the things we should be done with such a systems? It goes with other everything other things as well. And uh, comment on, on the slides of a feedback, how feedback is personalized, immediate, detail, multimodal. The comment from the Spencer blog was, yeah, but I like the feedback from my teacher. My That feedback makes me feel known. We know that teacher will give a critical feedback, but that means we acknowledge the presence, the work of our students, and this is important. Show them that we care. <laughs> the great thing they mentioned with the AI system is time. It is so time saving for, for the teachers. But yes, as the students could take a shortcut, we could take a shortcut, we could cut time on some activities, but we could also waste time talking a lot to the AI tools, but not getting results we are going to use in our practice. So we spend a lot of time just wasting it. 
So are we spending or wasting? Where is the return of our, of our investment in those tools? So our, how are we playing with the prompting? And um, who will decide what we are spending the AI tool for? So um, one of the recommendations was that decide what you want to solve with AI, find appropriate AI tool and use it for that and ignore other thousand possibilities because you can't solve all the thousand tasks, all the thousand processes, you will uh, get lost maybe or spend too much time. One question from my side, I follow several teaching groups on different social media networks and seeing what teachers really want AI to do is quite complicated complicated from our professional integrity. So do I, do really we need AI tools to do that instead of us? Do we really want AI tool to write recommendation, to write feedback? Uh, are we actually the skilling ourselves, making ourselves just a computer feeder, not uh, professional teachers? So who decides what AI will do instead of the teachers? So uh take use your voice to be the person who decides that otherwise somebody else will do it for you or the ai will do it for you so you are the one who de decides what and who deserves your time and effort um this is one of the comments from the miles berry recent presentation so a reality check first it doesn't understand. It just looks like it's good with the problem. So oh, it's bad with the problem solving. It's bad with the mathematics. But it's overconfident and this make things up and it's not up to date, but not quite relevant for us. Hallucinating is just a lovely word saying that AI system are producing errors and a fake. Um, ideas, fake articles and different things. So what you see on the slide now is one of the overview from uh, Philippa Hardman about new things happen. I think two or three days ago, a assistant for human educators come to the to visibility of the audience. But what she uh, wanted us to know uh, was Assistant has hallucinations, so you will spending a lot of time validating questionable outputs. Um, data privacy. Okay, what we are sharing with those tools to get the results. So don't share students' work with the AI tools if those data information are not protected in the right way. Um, we think that our conversation with different AI tools is uh, very private, very exclusive. I'm sorry to say, no, there is no exclusivity in your relationship with AI tools. Everybody could read what you communicating with the tool. And to get quality results, you have to know your area. So you have to be able to recognize mistakes, to fix the answers you got from the tools, uh, because Otherwise, you will get false resources served to your students. So um, lots of things you have to know to be able to, to fix errors and use it quite responsible with a high quality. Uh, as, a, as a part of the guidance, I'm sharing with you some UNESCO resources. One is published about uh, guidance about generative AI published uh, in September. Uh, they are talking about uh, how to guide in institutions, governments, but also individuals in the use of different generative AI tools. Uh, specifically here, uh, monitoring and reporting unlawful generative AI applications. So when you see errors, when you see bre uh, breaking the law from such tools, in uh, get involved, commented, reported, and also inform the learners and address complex 
issues of informed consent if you're using such a tool with their data. Uh, one of the new things which is still in a drafting uh, prog in the drafting stage is uh, AI competency framework for students and teachers. Just sharing with you, it's not publicly available yet. But what are expected for you to know, to be able to do, to understand? So human aspects, implications of the AI on human values, critical role of teacher agency. Um, ethical implications and advocating for ethical use, then importance of teacher validation, critical evaluation and specific needs and context. Then two more aspects, pedagogy, so potential implications of AI on pedagogical practices. You have to be aware that AI systems use different pedagogical practices, maybe not aligned with your, maybe completely different, maybe wrong one. Professional development, so um, utilizing AI tools for participation in learning communities like today. Well, you're not using AI tool unless somebody is using AI note taking tool. Let's see afterwards. And for transformative professional development in different contexts. So there are three levels uh, of progression. Um, I think that each one of us should be on a level one, at least as soon as possible. So by the end of this year, let's take that pledge. Because that means we are grasping the essence of AI competencies, relevance for our personal professional development, gaining basic awareness, knowledge and skills to use. And of course, we will progress in the next year to get on a deepening level. So teachers develop the ability to utilize AI in real world context independently, demonstrating a deeper knowledge and skill progression. And on the level three will be creators. We will demonstrate the ability to use different tools. We master knowledge skill, but we'll also go into the innovation process and transformational progress. Looking forward to see that happening. Also, uh, on the page of UNESCO, you could find the old version of this table, but it soon be available, I think, for the uh, debates, for the discussion uh, on the LinkedIn, usually. So here are some of the learning outcomes we are used to know about different uh, areas, so different aspects and on different levels. So let's read, for example, AI pedagogy on level three. Teachers can critically evaluate AI's role in a pedagogical practice and design an AI-enhanced transformative pedagogies. Looking forward to see it because that may mean we find ways to efficiently, meaningful, responsibly use AI tools to support uh, teaching and learning progress. Of course, we will follow development of these uh, frameworks. I'm working on it as well. So one trick questions for you. So uh, when we say edech, not esep, edech, edech means what of these A, B, C or D? Environmental data exchange hub, European disaster evaluation hurdles, European digital education hub, Empowering diverse entrepreneurs holistically. You could just put the letter in the chat. <laughs> well, I mentioned this name several times, so that's why I said it's a trick question. Good, good. So you've been listening to me. Good ones. This is quite formative assessment for me as well as for you. Yes, agree with you. C is correct answer. And the question was here because I want to raise awareness among you that there is European Digital Education Hub, which is a lovely place to collaborate, to discuss, to join the activities among teachers and different levels of education. So from primary schools all the way to university and also ed tech providers are, are there, especially startups. So do join the community, I highly recommended it. You've seen there's lovely results from the AI squad 
and there are also they also work on a digital education on digital competencies on sustainability on interoperability so you could see different uh, groups and different expertise so find a team you like you would like to work with i will just go briefly through the these seven uh, reports. So first one about teachers' competences, building on Digicom, building on uh, ethical guidelines. And then if you want to achieve those competences, here are our recommendation for the part you could follow in your uh, personal development, professional development. The third one talk about specific examples for different levels uh, in education for using different tools for different purposes. The fourth one talk about uh, curriculums, about education, about AI, giving some examples from Ukraine, Spain and uh, Italy. Then to a bit higher level, talking about influence on the governance, so either on the regional or national level, so uh, how we are governing the use of AI in education system. Then one on focusing on human rights, um, law, education data, so protecting uh, students, teachers, and following, of course, protection of uh, human rights and uh, rule of law. The seventh one is the one I mentioned uh, several times about assessment, feedback, personalization. You will also, for those who are following the course, you will see some additional parts of it there for your discussion and for your learning as well. So for the conclusion, um, there are so many tools, so little time. Uh, be aware the time is a precious. Time is the only thing we couldn't get back. We couldn't earn or buy from somewhere, at least not yet. <laughs> um, and what is happening is that um, tools are getting into our hands by marketing, as always. So don't you get... Uh, cheated or fooled by clever marketing and cue design, use your professional expertise and um, use your validation uh, assessment protocols to decide which of the tools you are going to use and how are you going to use it for the benefits of your students and yourself as well. Uh, please pay attention to the message in the chat about the course, which uh, Effie, Maria, Lena and I mentioned, if you would like to join it. So, one philosophical question. Left part is students, right part is the teachers. So, are we cheating if we are using AI tools to create tasks, rubrics? Yeah, if we are using AI tools to autograde students' work, write feedback, recommendations? Or maybe our students? are cheating by using AI tools to collect ideas, improvements, right? There is a mention of the essay here, but it could be any kind of task. So are we going to tell the students that we are using AI to give them feedback and to autograde them? Are they going to tell us if they are using AI system for uh, answer our assessment and the tasks? Something for discussion later on. but. Let's finish with something quite practical. So here is a shared board with you. And I kindly invite you that from your perspective, from your experience, give us some advice, share. What would you tell fellow teachers how to rethink assessment, how to assess using the AI tools, how to make teaching easier or make teaching better or make learning more efficient with the support of the AI tools. OK, I will open it as well. Waiting for you to to write some advices for the, for the end. 
talking back to our lovely fast helpful changing word cloud and comments to Stenavi. Okay, while you are writing, I did put link in the chat. I will put it one more time and I will get back to presentation so you could see the, the links as well. Okay, so links are in the chat and I'm opening presentation again. These links are the same, the, the first and the second one, the first one just, just shorten. So bit L Y A I E S E P. Uh, please, if you are typing that bit.ly link, use all capital letters to be sure of that. Um, Maria Elena, while we are waiting for the, the responses, maybe you would like to share additional information. And I could just then end up. Oops. I'm stop Great. sharing my screen <laughs> and I will show it at the end after your announcements. OK, so uh, Lydia, thank you very much. Uh, I saw some important and very interesting information uh, before. Yes, before we close this webinar and after participants take some time to explore this collaborative board, uh, I would like to share with you um, the evaluation form. It will only take uh, five minutes for you to fill it in. It's uh, for our participants. We want to hear from you. We want to know your experience with this webinar and your comments uh, will only help us to get better. Uh, apart from that, I would like to share with you the upcoming events on the European School Education Platform. As you can see, we have, uh, uh, apart from today's webinar, we have another webinar scheduled on the 23rd of November. Uh, it's a very important webinar concerning small and rural schools, schools that are in, um, uh, uh, that are uh, they uh, they are in uh, areas uh, which is difficult to access, and uh, our speakers will talk about the innovative tools that uh, uh, teachers can use in order to uh, facilitate their students' learning. You can also see some e-twinning events. Uh, we have a similar course on rural schools about our e-twinners. And uh, for those who are not uh, uh, familiar with e-twinning, we invite you to uh, search for e-twinning and uh, who knows, maybe become part of uh, the e-twinning community, which uh, counts, uh, I think, one million teachers right now. And um, we would like to thank you for uh, participating once again. Uh, we saw many, <laughs> we saw quite an increased number of participants today and thank you very much. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Lydia, I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, uh, process too as well. You have the course right now. Um, and uh, I don't know if uh, anyone has any questions to share in the chat. I saw a question earlier. Uh, it was about uh, uh, most of the AI tools are from uh, uh, US uh, provenience. Does it make any sense for uh, for us, probably for the teachers, to use them? Would you like to reply this question? It was the last one by Veronique. Yes, I will. I'm just uh, fighting with, with, with the board. <laughs> okay, I will share the board uh, again, so it could be... Okay, you could be reading it <laughs> while I'm trying to answer. Uh, well, I, I completely agree with the question. This is the problem for us, and this is problem for large language pro, uh, models because they are based mostly on the US, UK, and eventually Australian uh, resources, so English language, and all tools are mainly created uh, within the US that makes uh, for us, different perspective on pedagogies, different perspective on assessment, different perspective on the on the learning progress for our students. So um, I do recommend following um, startup scene in the Europe. There is a accelerator within the EDEH as well, pointing out some uh, different tools created within the Europe 
and specifically for education, which could be a good idea. Uh, also, I could um, recommend some French examples from their AI partnership developed two years ago. So, um, agree with you. US developed tools are not easily uh, implemented in European context. So let's see what will going on. Wow, we have so many <laughs> advices. Improve pedagogical practices, create innovative lessons, use AI wisely, do not resist, embrace. <laughs> what is the cost? Not AI is free, not free. You know what they said, there is no free lunch. So you are either paying by money or by your data. Um, is there or oh, should be used carefully also for assessment? AI designed by Euro for European students. It could improve creativity, but wisely. Um, take a chance. Changes is happening anyway. Don't be concerned with cheating. It's the same story uh, for plagiarism. Creative tasks avoid students from getting information around. Double check, share, discuss and have positive attitude. Um, checking transparency of the use, risk and advantages. Stories. Wow, there is some in the Spanish. If this is Spanish language, I'm sorry. I don't understand it, but I will ask translator to do it for me. So, um, Maria Elena, I think I could finish up with this uh, lovely set of the advices. Uh, you will have access to this board later on. I will just try to reshuffle the, the posts so you could see all of them at the same time. Stop sharing and uh, thank you all for playing with me, being part of the use of the AI tools uh, today and enjoy learning and experimenting. Good luck to everybody. Keep learning. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. I hope you can hear me. Yes, <laughs> great. Uh, we really hope to see you soon uh, in any of our upcoming events. We hope to see you uh, registered in the course that uh, Lydia moderates. And um, I wish you all a nice evening. And that's all from my side. Thank you very much for attending today's webinar. Have a nice evening, everyone. And uh, remember to explore the upcoming activities we have. Bye. Thank you, Lydia. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.